Good morning. Good morning, guys. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Thank you. Okay. Uh... Any questions before we start? So uh, can you guys see the uh, blackboard? Hello? Can, can, you, can you guys see my screen? Okay. Uh, first thing, today's lab, the tutor will talk about uh, pipe and uh, redirection. Um, yeah, kind of review those topics. Actually, we already started those content in the lecture. Uh, tutor will go through that and also um, uh, introduce your new lab exercise. So in the in the uh, in this week's lab exercise, you need to implement uh, uh, three pipes. They use two, two pipes, three commands, two pipes, do the inter-process communication. Okay, so it's uh, very similar to your homework, but uh, here you directly use the program to implement. I think that's the first step for you to uh, finish your homework, okay. Any questions before we start, before we formally start? Everything is okay, huh? Okay, so uh, I think last time actually we talked about um, the Yesterday, right? Yesterday, we introduced several issues. Uh, basically, we talk about uh, uh, pipe. Then we also uh, introduce several system calls. Particularly at the end of the lecture, we talk about uh, link, right? So uh, before the end of the lecture, I think one student asked, can we move that uh, uh, symbolic link file into different uh, um directory so we we tried then uh, certainly we can do that okay so then then the question is that is that very useful because uh, say if we move this to another location then we cannot connect or we cannot link to the file we want to link to right so it uh, looks like this uh what is the meaning of the link file right symbolic link okay so so let, let, let me uh, show you some examples to show why a symbolic link is useful. Okay. So first, uh, let's uh, review, okay? Uh, hard link, okay. So uh, can you guys see my uh, virtual machine environment here? Hello, guys. Can you guys see the virtual machine? Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, so hard link, right? Basically, hard link means we end a entry into the directory file, which means we end a mapping with the file name 
and uh, the corresponding inode number, okay, from the old file. For example, F1, right? Suppose we already have a file inside F1, this file we have hollow, right? So if you want to add a link F2, okay, we can use the uh, ln F1, F2. F1 is the old file, F2 is the new, new link file. Then during this link, actually we didn't um, uh, really create a file called F2. Actually we only add a new entry into current directory file uh, in which we have file name F2 and the inode number, corresponding inode number uh, from F1, okay? So if we want to look at uh, F1, F2, you can see they both refer to the same inode the, the file, which file we have inode number, right? So the, the inode number is the same, 131433, Okay, so you can see that both, they, only, they, they are only names. The real internal representation or real ID is the inode number, right? Okay, we didn't create a new file, use F2. We only add an entry into directory file. Uh, which is name, file name is F2, the inode number is uh, 131433. So now we can see it, right? Okay, so if we cut F2, then we get hello because they refer to the same file, okay? Symbolic, symbolic link is different, right? Basically, if we use hyphen S, then we have a symbolic link. Then we link to same file. However, uh, if we provide path and file name, then we can store this path and file name into the symbolic, symbolic link file, okay? So let's first look at what is the current uh, 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 path, okay? Which is a home CICR3150 and so on, okay? So then let's uh, link this still F1, then we want to link to, oh, sorry, okay. So our file, because we want to link, link this file, right? This is a, the whole absolute path with the file name. Then we want to link this to our symbolic link file as one, as F1, okay? Then let's look at, then, you can see that this is F1, F2, and S, F1. Okay, certainly S, F1, we have a different inode number with this uh, file we link to F1. You can see the content is the absolute path, okay, basically. So, now, S F1 is a symbolic link to F1, okay? So if we print out, if we want to print out the content of uh, S F1, then this, uh, because this is a link to the F1, so we go to the F1 to get the content, right? Then now, if we want to move S F1 into another directory, which already have link one, then, Let's go to the link one. Okay, if we cut SF1, okay, we can still get it. The reason is that, think about that, because our symbolic link now contain the absolute path that as long as we still have that F1 under that directory, then we can build up this link, okay? Then basically, no matter where you move this um, um, symbolic link file, then you can still link to the original file. Okay. So that's what I want to mention in the beginning. Okay, so any questions? Any questions, comments?
Okay, uh, I don't see any questions. Okay. Yeah, let me continue. Okay. Now I want to talk about uh, new content file system implementation. So before I start, before I continue, um, can you guys see the slides cause organization? Yeah, I just want to make sure we are on the same page. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, here we go to an important topic now. <laughs> of course, every topic is important, but uh, uh, storage is particularly important because we have one homework, paper-based homework, and also one project, okay? Uh, so in the homework, basically we talk about uh, some uh, uh, important issue related to uh, inode and uh, uh, data, okay? Then in the uh, second question related to the directory file, okay? Then uh, in a project, actually, you will have a very good experience to really implement a small file system, okay? So you will know the detail later, okay? Okay, so before we uh, talk about file system implementation, let's look at the fundamental issue. So I hope at this moment, you are still remember we are talking about Phenuma architecture. Okay, we have three parts. Okay, we have a CPU. We have CPU. CPU is our central process unit. Okay, so basically, uh, if we want to do any processing, um, Relate to the data uh, when we do the arithmetic operation or we, we do the logic operation, we have to utilize CPU to do it. Okay. Particularly, we have a certain instruction to do arithmetic and uh, logic operation. Okay. Then, of course, inside CPU, we also have some control uh, instruction, for example, branch instruction, uh, memory access instruction, right? Then, then go to the memory, okay? So memory is very important because memory is used to contain the instruction and the data. Instruction and the data, data, right? So instruction will be executed by CPU. Data will be loaded inside CPU registers, okay? Which is, uh, which is inside, uh, inside the CPU, okay, register, then a uh, very small unit, small memory unit, then we can move the data from the memory, then go to the register, then uh, utilize those instruction, okay, to uh, process the data, then stop back, right? Okay, this is our part of a major computing unit, okay? CPU, our instruction data will be put into the memory, can be processed, okay? So another very important part is I.O. we talk about, input output device, okay? I.O. device, particularly uh, in the coming two weeks, we'll talk about storage. Storage is our uh, hard disk and SSD persistent uh, devices. Okay, so basically, after we have our uh, program, we have our data, we want to store those data or program as files onto the storage, okay, our persistent storage device. Then the reason is that after we turn off our computer, because they are persistent, Okay, this device is persistent, okay. Uh, during the pandemic, persistent is very important. <laughs> okay, I hope everyone is persistent, okay. So persistent, persistent uh, devices means when we turn off our computer, the data will be stored on the persistent storage. When we turn on, then we can still get our data back. Okay, this is our IO, okay, uh, storage device. 
Okay, this is the topic we discussed. Yeah. So what we are talking about right now is mainly related to this part. Okay, so let's further simplify. So because we have several different storage devices. So our main topic right now is hard disk. Okay, we talk about hard disk. Okay, of course, our um, concept, the, the, the concept, the technique we introduced here are very general. So can be applied to any devices, but generally speaking here, we use a uh, hard disk as an example, okay? Then uh, the main issue here is that, okay, we have uh, those files, okay? So those files can be data file, can be our program. So we already have several programs, right? Those C programs as well, right? Then we can have a source program, we can have a compiled uh, executable program. All those will be stored as a file onto our hard disk. Okay, the reason, again, because this is a persistent, right? Persistent. So after we store it, then uh, theoretically, <laughs> we can keep our data forever. Uh, inside the disk, okay. So, um, so the problem is that, okay, how to, because user, think about that. Actually from user perspective, we already, we are the user, right? We use the computer, everything. So generally speaking, when we consider files, actually we only care about two things, okay? So first, where is the corresponding directory? This file should, should be put, right? So, oh, here, inside here, we call it a path, okay? Path, this is related to the directory, okay? Which directory we put our file, right? Directory, okay? Another issue is related to file name, okay? So, as long as we have path, we have file name, then we can find our file correspondingly from hard disk, okay? So basically we are talking about this issue, okay? So think about right now, forget about uh, uh, CPU memory, forget about those things. Now you can think about everything will be stored onto our hard disk, okay? Because we need to make it persistent, okay? Of course, when we process data, we have to load our uh, file into a memory, but uh, forget about that part. But generally speaking, right now, everything is stored on hard disk, okay? However, we want to provide this uh, interface, pass and the file name to user, okay? If user user provide, for example, I want to go to a home, okay? Uh, Zili, okay? Then A1, then you have to, Give me the corresponding file which is stored onto the hard disk. Okay. So that's the general idea. I hope this is the first issue, then you are very clear okay, about this. Yeah, uh, let me cl clean up here. Where is my. Where is. I cannot. Okay. Sorry, guys. I I need to. Yeah. I. Let Let me reshare re this. Okay. Okay. So. Uh. That's the first issue. Basically, uh, I want to make sure everyone understand. Now we are talking about hard disk, okay? Hard disk, all data, all, all things we talk about is stored on hard disk, okay? Then this is a hard disk. Then, then basically 
after we store our data, metadata, and so on, then uh, later we can always get the data, get data back. Okay, so that's what we are talking about right now. Okay, so in order to implement this, then basically we need to care about two things. Okay, so first the structure, the second is our access method. So this can be applied into many different things, but we use a computer to solve the problem. So basically we care about this structure and our algorithm, okay, you can think about. Specifically, uh, what type of on disk this structure? Okay, so we need to some we need to have some on disk this structure to help us to organize our data and the metadata. So we can provide this simple interface, path and the file name. Path, file name. Okay, so because user didn't, uh, user don't request request a lot. User only say, okay, I want to go to my directory, store my file. Okay, so we want to implement this. Okay, so that's first issue. Okay, what is the on this uh, structure? So we can we can organize our data and the metadata. Okay, to provide this service. Okay, second, for the access method, our uh, algorithm, okay, we want to provide a uh, system call to the user, right? Remember, we want to provide open, we want to provide read, we want to provide write, okay? Then how to provide those service, okay? Then uh, based on those uh, data structure, then how to provide service, then user can really use a path and a file name, find the corresponding data stored on disk. Okay, so that's what we try to solve. Okay, so uh, in this uh, lecture, I will use a very simple example. Okay, suppose uh, our hard disk, uh, we have a very simple hard disk. You can see here, we have a totally, uh, 64 times four capacity bytes, okay, uh, or, or kilobytes, okay. So uh, basically this is two, five, six kilobytes. Okay, so uh, my hard disk is very, very poor. So the capacity is uh, not much, only has 256 kilobytes. Okay, so in order to manage data more effectively, usually for file system, we we will divide our uh, disk space into block. Okay, divide the disk into block. Okay, I think last last yesterday, one student asked what is a block. Okay, I hope now you are clear. Uh, this is a logic concept. Basically, we see that for our whole disk space, we will divide this disk space into block. Then each block, the size is four kilobytes. Then we can use block number to refer a particular area on disk. For example, disk zero refer to the first four kilobytes in this disk, okay? Then correspondingly, disk one is uh, uh, the eight kilobytes and so on, right? Uh, from, from four to eight and so on, okay? Because my example disk, the total space is two, five, six kilobytes. So uh, each block, the size is four kilobytes. So totally I have 64 blocks, okay? So now we can use block number from zero to 63 to represent, okay, a certain area, okay. So is this clear? So the block I addressed from zero to N minus one, okay, because we divide this into N block. Is this clear? Hello guys? No response, huh? 
Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, then um, in order to provide service, okay, we have to divide our whole space into several area we call region, okay? So we reserve, we reserve data region to store data, okay? This is our hard disk. Remember, I have a two, five, six kilobytes hard disk, okay? This is my example hard disk, okay, here. So specifically, I, for this example, I want to reserve some area which is used to store data only, only store data. Okay, you can see that I reserve um, uh, two, four, how many? Uh, because here is eight, right? <laughs> so two, two, four, two, four, uh, my mathematics is not very good, okay? So two, four, six, right? So from eight to 63, oh, sorry. Th this is my, sorry, this is my heart is, <laughs> okay. Two, four, six kilobytes. That is divided into um, 64 blocks, okay. I reserve, um, five, six blocks, okay, right? From eight to 63, okay? Block eight to block uh, 63. This is used to store data, okay? So uh, later we'll, it will be clear. Basically this area we call data region, basically we store data, okay? So uh, of course our unit, our unit here is a block. Okay, basically you can think about, okay, now if I want to store data, I have to say, oh, my where is, uh, for example, I want to store data into A, right? So of course I have to give a, a path now, suppose uh, this is under root directory, okay? Root directory, okay? Then uh, uh, basically for this file, A, where is my data to be stored? Then here, we don't directly go to this uh, area anymore. We will use block number. Okay, for example, I say, oh, block number eight, block number nine, block number, block, block number 10, okay, will be allocated to store your file, okay, your data, okay, data file, okay, into those data block, okay. So generally speaking, this is a unit we allocate, each data block is a unit allocated to file to store data, okay? Then you may wonder, okay, so why we want to do this, okay? So do we have uh, any other information we need to store? Because we reserve some space here, right? Uh, seven blocks here. So those seven blocks actually will be divided into, uh, uh, into several parts. The first part is the inode, okay? Remember, we already introduced inode concept. So later we'll give you a, a very detailed introduction about the inode, but generally speaking at this moment, you can think about for each file, uh, his internal representation inside our file system is inode, okay? We have a data structure inode to contain all information related to, related to this file. But I know that it's the metadata. Okay? It's not related to our real data. Okay, so this is why our data will be stored into this region, okay, based on data block. Okay, our real data, our real data will be stored here. But our metadata, which is each file, we have one metadata. We have one set of metadata we call I node. Uh, later we will introduce the detail, but uh, generally speaking, each file, each file, each file will be mapped to an inode. 
Okay. Then this inode, we use inode ID. Okay. Inode number. Okay. Inode number to represent this inode. Okay. So uh, particularly, we have a region on disk is used to store inode. Okay. We call inode region. Okay. You can see here. We this hold an array of on disk inode. Okay. So basically, for each file we create, then we will allocate a one inode. Uh, into uh, this region, okay? Then um, suppose our inode size is 256 bytes, okay? So particularly in this example, actually our block number is from three to seven, block three to block seven, okay? Then this is used to contain inode. Okay, then the inode size is 256 bytes. So uh, if we have four kilobytes block, because it's a four kilo, right? Divided by 256, okay, we got 16 inodes. Okay, each block contain 16 inodes. So the file system, because we have, we use five, three, four, five, six, seven, right? We have five, we have five data blocks, three, four, five, six, seven. We have five data block is used to contain inodes, each one, we contain 16 nodes, so we have five times, five times 16. In total, we have 80 high nodes. Okay. Actually, here, I also want to answer another question. I think uh, yesterday, when student asked, um, do we have a limit related to I know number, I know? Okay, yeah, you can see this uh, is clearly tell us we have a limitation. Basically, uh, total number of inodes represent the maximum number of files we can have in a file system, at least for this design, okay, for this design. Of course, we have a lot different way to uh, design file system, but uh, for this simple design, you can see that we have limit. Then what is the limit? Number of inode block. Okay, how many blocks we use to contain inode? Actually, it's a limitation for how many inodes we can have in a system, okay? So uh, it's not clear, I know. At this moment, we still didn't talk about uh, what is the inside, right? But uh, basically you can think about for each file, we need to contain some uh, metadata. Uh, for example, where my data stored, because now the data will be stored into data region, right? So uh, for example, I give you a file, then you, we need to know, oh, where, where, where is my data, right? Where, to, where is the data to be stored? Then I can find my data and so on. Uh, of course, we, we also have other information we will talk about later. Okay, then another issue, okay, you can see after we have inode, okay, uh, inode blocks, we have uh, five blocks, okay. We also have a, a bitmap block, okay. Particularly, we have a data bit block, inode bit block, okay. So, what is a bitmap? Basically, this is used to represent uh, for each inode or each data block, whether or not this is a free or allocate. <coughs> so when we need this, uh, when we create a new file, which means we need to allocate a new inode for this file, because each new file, we have a new inode, right? then all information related to this file will be stored into the inode. Then we have to 
find a free anode, okay, in this region, okay. How to find those uh, uh, free anode is very, very simple way to represent why anode is free is use a bit to represent. For example, this bit is zero or one. Uh, zero means uh, this uh, anode is free, right? Then one means this is the occupy, okay? This already allocated. Okay, so this is called bitmap. Then bitmap means, okay, suppose in this case, we have 80 inodes. Then could you tell me how many bits we need, okay, in this inode block? Huh? Eighty files. Uh, how many bits? Huh? Hello. Okay. So for each inode, right? We have one bit. Okay. So totally we have eighty bits. Okay. Each bit represent one inode. Okay. Then it's very easy for us to find a free um, inode. Okay. So go through this bitmap. The find it. Oh, this uh, this uh, uh, this bit is uh, zero. Okay. For, for example, when arguing that we find the first uh, free I know. Okay. We find the first uh, zero that bit. Then correspondingly, we, we, we know. Oh, this uh, this I know is free. Then we can allocate that I know. Of course, uh, uh, reversely, when we delete a file from the file system, we also need to go back to here to set up our bitmap, okay? So this is for bitmap of uh, inodes. But correspondingly, we also need the, uh, a bitmap for our data block, okay? Basically, because when we allocate the data, we will allocate based on the data block. Then each data block, we have one bit in this bitmap is used to represent whether or not this data block is free. Then later, when we allocate the data to a particular file, uh, which is inode, then basically we can see, oh, we, we can go to our uh, data block bitmap to find that, that uh, first, for example, first free data block, then set that bit as one, then allocate this data block to this file and so on, okay? So I hope this is clear, okay? Yeah. Then the last thing, okay? <laughs> you can see we also, uh, we also have a S here, okay? This S is Superman, okay? <laughs> we call it super block. Super block actually contain the information of uh, this file system. Basically you can think about, okay, now, I want to uh, find my inode, right? I have to know where to start my inode region, then uh, where to end, right? Then also, where is my data region? Where to start those information? For example, uh, how many inodes we have, be, be, the, where is the began location of inode and so on. Uh, then uh, later, when we uh, want to operate on our file, then we will read our super block into the memory, okay? Then uh, we can get all information. For example, where to find my inode map, bitmap, a data block bitmap, where is uh, my inode region, where is my data region, and so on. So that correspondingly, we can use uh, inode. And uh, uh, inode number, I know number actually is our array index, right? I know number to find the corresponding I know data block number to find the corresponding data. Okay. So then perfectly solve the problem. So at this moment, I hope you understand the two things. Okay. So first we have I node. Okay. Then if I give you I know number, then Based on this I know number, I can go to this I know the region. This region is an array. Then use this I know number, I can find the corresponding I know. 
Then inside the inode, it contains all information related to this file. Okay. The second, all data will be stored into data block region, data region, right? Data region, okay? So when we, when, when we have a data block number, okay, then we can go to our uh, disk to find the corresponding data based on data block. Okay. Then we, we generally speaking, we have two regions. Okay. We, one big region is our inode region. Another big region is our data region, basically, uh, for our file system. Okay. I, I, I noticed there are some questions in chat box, but let me uh, continue for uh, one more slides. Okay, then I will go back to answer your question. So, as I mentioned, okay, each inode is referred by inode number. Then, based on the inode number, file system calculate where inode, inode is on the disk. Uh, for example, if uh, uh, we have inode number 32, then um, this is a uh, uh, array index for our inode array, which is stored into our inode. Uh, in, into this uh, inode table, inode region, right? So basically we can calculate, okay? Based on 32 size of inode, okay? We can get this number. Then we have a starting address, right? For this inode uh, table. This address, the, those information will be stored into super block. Then if we want to, uh, work with a particular file system, then we have to uh, get the information, super block information, okay? Then basically we know where, is, uh, where to start this uh, table. Then based on this table, for example, in this case, the starting address is 16 kilobytes, then plus our uh, uh, starting outside is eight kilobytes, then we go to the 20 kilobytes, we can find the corresponding location. Um, um, on disk, okay. Uh, a little bit more detail. Actually, disk are not byte addressable, but the disk are sector uh, based address. Okay, each sector is uh, 500 uh, terabytes. Okay, then this is some calculation based on this I know number. Then we can find the corresponding block then use this block based on this starting address, then we can find the corresponding uh, sector. Okay, then from the sector, we can get our inode. Okay, so those are details, okay? Those are details. Um, I, 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 I may talk about a little bit next time, but uh, this part is not important. The detail is not important, okay? Because your homework is not uh, um, go to the sector. But generally speaking, you can think about, okay, if I give you an inode number, if we get an inode number, then we need to find the corresponding location from our hard disk. Then we can get our inode. Then after we get inode, then basically we know all information related to the file, okay? So uh, with that, I want to stop here. You can see the inode, right? What is the inode? Inode inside actually will, will store those information. Okay, later, uh, next week, I will continue to talk about this. So now uh, let me go back to answer some question. Yeah, I think you guys uh, gave me very good question. Okay, so let me go back to answer some questions. Basically, uh, this is a, uh, all for this lecture, then if you want to, if you want to uh, listen to the QA session, if you want to join the QA session, then you can continue. Otherwise you can leave. Let me copy uh, all those comments into the whiteboard. Okay, can you guys see the question I copied here on the web board? 
Yeah. Let me see. Oh, yes. Okay. So, uh, first question. We can only have uh, 16 files for uh, 256 uh, uh, kilobyte storage. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I want to ask you how many files we have, we can have right now for this uh, exam example, example um, file system, huh? Maximally. It's not 16. Hello? Anyone? Eighty, right? Eighty, right? So maximum is eighty. So we can have eighty files maximumly. Why? Because that's uh, the total number of inodes, right? This is our total number of inodes. Each inode is used to represent one file. So in total, we can have up to 80 files, okay? So I hope I answer your question, right? So I think uh, Inho also helped me to answer this question, 80, right? Yeah, thank you, okay. So next question, uh, a block, a block has uh, 256 bytes, but I know BMAP only need 80 bits. Isn't it a waste? <laughs> oh, sorry, I mean, okay. Yeah, of course, this is a very good question. That's a waste, okay? That's a waste. Yes, you are right. But uh, in this case, actually, uh, we want to make it simple. Yeah, so, in reality, we, we try to utilize that uh, space. Um, however, uh, basically, uh, uh, if we utilize this way, uh, we can easily access the data. We don't need to do a lot of uh, calculation to find the location, so, right? So this is kind of trade-off, but uh, you are right, okay? That's a waste. We should, uh, we should utilize that, <laughs> okay? That's space. okay? So the last question, I think I didn't, maybe I didn't copy that question clear, correctly. Okay. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, let, let, let's, let me copy more, more question. I think I got more question here. Okay, uh, again, yeah, I think I got this 80 question. How could we find the data block of file allocate? Okay, is this stored in the inode? Okay, yeah, this is a very good question. Okay, how can we find the data block of file allocate? Yes, it's inside the inode. How to find it? How to find it, we will talk about. Okay, this is a very important part. Okay, very, very important part. Okay, very good question. Okay, very important part. We will talk about later. Okay, but generally speaking, it's inside our I know. Okay, so this is why we said I know the very important. If we have I know, then basically we can find our data. The file system design is determined by the OS. So different, well, have different structure. Yeah. So, um, I think uh, see, generally speaking, you are right. Okay, different uh, file system may have different uh, file system. Um, but uh, another another way to make the work is also okay. Uh, we may have the same file system. This file system can be implemented in different uh, operating system, okay? So basically different, same, the same file system. File system can be implemented in different operating system, okay? Yeah, but generally speaking, different file system may have different file systems. I think I also 
uh, our question. I think maybe another question is uh, what is the what is different is the sector and the block, right? So that question basically sector actually um, is uh, is the uh, hardware. When we go to our hard hard disk, when we really operate our device, then the device requirement is that we will use 500 terabytes. We will use sector, then find a particular uh, area to read the 500 terabytes because this is a hardware requirement. Okay, for hard disk, usually they use uh, this uh, concept. Okay, uh, their unit of our hard disk will use this one. This is the unit. Block is our logic, right? It's inside our file system, usually it's four kilobytes. Four kilobytes, okay? So this is our file system concept, okay? inside our file system. So this is a logic uh, concept, right? You can think about this is not, a, this, this needed to be translated into sector so we can utilize the device to read our data. Okay. I hope I answer your question. Yeah. Okay, so I I, I I see a few more questions. Let me copy. Okay. Yeah. You guys are a very good student. Huh? Ask a very good question. Okay, I like your question. It's a, I know simply a number or the structure or that can be many kinds of information. I know there's a number. I know, no, no, no. I know number is number, right? I know number is a number, right? But I know is um, a structure, okay? It's a structure. Oh, it's a kind of a data structure. Uh, we can, that is used to contain all information of a file. Okay, how about that? Huh? So OS uh, file system are not dependent, no, okay. Uh, they don't uh, exactly depend on, of course they are very close to each other, but uh, generally speaking, we, we usually see operating system contain file system, but uh, uh, different uh, operating system may have a uh, same file system. Yeah, so they are independent to each other uh, in that sense. But but uh, but uh, this is uh, totally depends on what operating system means, right? So usually when we talk about operating system, we talk about operating system contain uh, process management, file, file management, which is our file system, right? Yeah, but uh, inside our file system, we may have different, uh, in, inside our operating system, we may have different file system, okay? I hope I answer your question, okay? Uh, yeah, so more question, okay. Yeah, let, let me answer my question here. So a hard disk is a circular way. Well, the calculation to allocate, uh, so I, I, don't, I don't understand the second part. So hard disk uh, uh, is a circular way, I don't, um, no, no, hard disk is a kind of, a, you, you cannot think about this as a, a, I will not think about this as a circular array, okay? I may think about this as a kind of a sector array, right? Sector array. <laughs> so basically, uh, you, you gave me sector number, sector number, then I will go to a particular sector, in which we can get data to get data, right? So, but it, it's not a circular 
All right. It's uh you you can think about this uh, sector, but uh, generally speaking, is a uh, a story device. Then uh, the interface is a sector. Okay. Then you give me a sector. You want to read this sector or write this sector. Then the you follow the certain demand, uh, command. Then basically you can, uh, after you prepare your your data, then you can write your data onto that sector. Or you can read your content from the sector. Okay. Well, the calculation to locate the file will be different. So what what do you mean? Well, the calculation to locate the file. Okay. So, uh, so I I I I delete this file. I delay this question because this is a kind of a confused question. But generally speaking, forget about the file. Okay. So file is inode inside our file system inode. Okay. Then uh, inside our inode, then we will find the use our inode mapping. Inside our inode, we will find our data. We will talk about that later next time. Okay, uh, I hope I answer all questions. Yeah. So how to do mapping and so on will be discussed uh, next week. Then you will be clear, okay? Then if uh, you are not clear, it's okay because you have homework to do. <laughs> you have project. After you finish your project, then uh, you will know what's going on, okay? So, uh, any other question? Any other issues? No? Okay. Thank you, guys. I will see you next week. Don't forget about uh, today's uh, lab. Okay. See you next week.